Hello and welcome to Currency Point, presented by me, Evan Lucas, for FP Markets. As always, please have a very good read through of the disclaimer on screen. Everything in this video is general in nature. FP Markets does not know your personal scenario, nor your personal financial goals, and therefore none of it should be relied upon as any form of advice at all. It is just general in nature only. It's interesting, we almost need a degree in communication going forward. It's never been more clear that central bankers now are pretty much the ones, in my view anyway, that are moving FX markets. I do, and I'm always very open about this, love fundamentals. And for those of you out there that do love technicals, completely understand that. But for me right now, over the next probably 24 to 36 months, maybe even as much as 48, we're going to have to accept that communication from CBs is going to be really, really core to the movements in FX. And there's no greater example than what happened last week uh, around the Bank of England and their uh, MPC meeting, having a look at their communication that they came out, like the Fed has done, and said that inflation in the UK is transitory, but they went further than that. They actually st stated very clearly that moving policy too early would actually harm the economic recovery. Big dovish call. And I think why we got caught up with the POE, with the uh, BCE around where it sat and what it was doing was the fact that Haradine, who is their chief economist, is probably the most hawkish one on the board. And that came out, he was the only dissenter in terms of an unchanging rate, which was expected. But having a statement so strongly dovish was not what he'd been basically saying publicly. So that is the communication issue. And here's the chart of pound US cable snapped really quickly. And out of that channel that you can see that's on there as well, and it's nowhere near bouncing back to that in terms of what we see. So that communication is going to be core. Now, the core question, and it's an easy one to answer, is that clearly, who do you look at first? It's the Fed. You always look at the Fed because most of what we talk about is pairs. Therefore, you're always going to have a base of a US dollar to whatever other currency you're looking at. And the reason I highlight the Fed, and I've spoken about this over and over and over again, and I know I sound like a broken record, but need to keep going with it because things are changing. They don't want to go back to 2013. That's known, that's an understandable, but they have to also start communicating that sometime in the next 18 months, the program they're currently on will change. It's a question of how they unwind QE and how they do that without having a taper tantrum. What they will do and need to see to start raising rates. Now, why I highlight that, let's have a look at someone like Ralph Bustick, who is the Atlanta Fed Chair. He was seen as a dovish member. Last week, he came out and showed that his feathers are completely hawkish in terms of how he sits. He does clearly state that he is one of the seven that believes that rates should rise in 2022 and that they should raise twice in 2023. He also then said that he thinks quantitative easing should start to be tapering in months. That's not talking about it, that's doing it. So if someone like him is moving that direction, you've got a communication problem because you've got someone like Jamie Bullard who is a known hawk who is going to be a voting member next year who is saying the same thing. The more and more they come to that, the more and more the market's going to wake up to this even more, and they have, let's point that out, that that means there has got to be strength in the US dollar because there is going to be higher rates. There is going to be a little bit of volatility. And that is also part of this is that it won't be linear. There will be jolts, gyrations, there will be different speeds, sizes to how this happens, and there will probably be scenarios where they realize they've gone too hard or too slow to move on things and will catch the market out. And the Bank of England is the example, is that it caught the market out believing that they were moving towards on a sort of incremental basis to starting to change policy. All G10 are gonna have this same problem. So for that reason, start with the US dollar base, but when you choose your pair, understand the other side and know what the Bank of England is doing versus the Fed. Know what the ECB is doing versus the Fed. Know what the RBA is doing against the Fed to give yourself that real example. Because right now, the US dollar is clearly strengthening and so it should be, but there will be periods where the Fed speak will get together. They do wanna try and talk the currency down. They do wanna talk about the fact that they are in the market for longer than the market's thinking. But overall right now, the strength in the economics is in the US dollar positive, and the more and more we see more hawkish talk, it's also a US dollar positive. 